Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough of an exercise of sorts from Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. If you go to his website, learnpythonthehardway.org, and click on Read the Free HTML Online, you'll go to the table of contents, and we are looking at exercise 35, which is called Branches and Functions. If you click on that, it takes you to this page. Now, this one really is more of a can you follow the argument and go along that way. And um, so, you get to take all of this information. It's a rather long program. And what it is, is it's, it's a text-based adventure game. It's a longer version of the one he had before. And it's, it's a great way of understanding the logic of games in general. Um, you know, even graphical ones, this is a good introduction. I've got this text here, and I've um, got it entered into Text Wrangler. So I'm going to go through it step by step here. Now, the first part here says, from sys import exit. What this is is sys is a, um, a library or module that's short for system, and exit is a special function that we're going to be bringing in that way. It's a way of uh, saving us some time coding by bringing in some functions so we can just refer to them without having to define them first. Okay, next we have a real big one here in blue. And what it is is we're creating a custom function called gold room, gold underscore room. And you see it takes no arguments, so the parentheses open and close with nothing in them, and we have the colon there. And when gold room runs, remember, this is defining the function. It has to be called to do this. But it says, the room is full of gold. How much do you take? Now, I've added enter a number because Zed didn't have that, and, you know, you could just get lost forever if you didn't know what to do that. So I put my little comment here. I said I added enter a number. Then it takes whatever the person types, it, it has a little blinking arrow for a cursor, and it takes whatever that person types and takes that raw input and assigns it to a variable called next. So that's a variable that we're defining here. Then we start going through the branches of the logic here. It says if zero is what's entered into next or one is in next. So if either one of those, then it's going to take that number, turn it into an integer. Now, because remember, it got entered, when it gets entered this way, because we did raw input, it saves it as a string, even though it's a single digit number. This converts that string to an integer, and it assigns that to a variable called how much. Okay. So if a person enters zero or one, it puts that into how much. Otherwise, if you type in anything other um, than a zero or one, it's going to ask you, it's going to say, man, learn to type a number. And it's going to, that's going to be an argument that it uses for a custom function called dead, which gets defined below. So that's an, that's an argument that's going to send to dead. Now, in terms of how much, so what the person types here, raw input goes into next. If they put zero or one in next, if, if what is in how much is less than 50, it says, nice, you're not greedy, you win. And then we have this little function here called exit zero. That's the, that's the one that we imported up here at the top. It's a system function and it was imported at the top and zero is a code. Now, um, there are a lot of error codes. If, it, if you put in an error code, it'll say, well, it exited because of this or because of that reason. And you can have lots of different numbers. Zero means there were no errors. And if how much is not less than 50, if it's something, you know, 50 or more, that's going to say, you greedy bastard. And then I added this little text, you're dead, which seemed appropriate because it calls up the function dead and it provides this as the argument. Okay, so that's that. That's gold room. So that's one function we've defined so far. The next one is bear room. So there's another function here. And it prints a few lines. There's a bear here. The bear has a bunch of honey. The fat bear is in front of another door. How are you going to move the bear? Well, it also creates a Boolean variable. Remember, Boolean means true, false, uh, and it's something that's yes or no. And in this case, it starts off by creating this variable called bear moved and assigning to it initially the variable, uh, the value false. And then it says while true. And so while we're running this thing here, it's going to ask for your input with the blinking cursor. And it says, if, um, it's going to take whatever you do and put it into next. Now, you notice we had next up here as well, but that variable name is only valid for within that function. It's what's called a local variable. 
So it's okay to use that same variable name down here the same way you can have a you know 100 functions in a row, all of which say for i, where i is an index variable. Anyhow, so we have next, and it says if you write take honey, then you're dead, and it gives a reason. L if, that means else if you write taunt the bear, and the bear has not moved. That is not bear move. See, we have bear here, and uh, not means false. So this is a this is a joint condition. And if if you say taunt the bear and the bear has not moved, then you can get away. And it changes then the variable bear move to true because the bear has now moved. Now, if you'd write something other than that, if L if, if you write taunt bear, but the bear has moved, then you've angered the bear and it kills you and you are dead. That's the, it calls the dead function. And if the bear has moved and you type open door, then you go into the gold room. And that's another function that was defined up here at the top. That's where we define gold room. And if you type anything else, it says, I have no idea what that means. And it might be a good idea to add prompts to give people ideas. Okay, after bear room, the next thing we have is Cthulhu room, because uh, he's messing with us. And uh, what this says is you see the great evil Cthulhu, he, it, whatever, stares at you and you go insane. Do you flee for your life or eat your head? And it looks at whatever you entered. Now, this is an interesting one because we're using a function here, if flee and then in next. And what this means is a person can enter a whole bunch of stuff and Python's gonna be looking for a particular keyword. If the word flee appears in there anywhere, then it's gonna run this next function. And it's going to run at start, and start is defined at the bottom. See, there's there's the start. It's going to be defined at the bottom. If, on the other hand, a person types in some text that contains the word head, then it's going to do. Then you're going to die, and it's going to say you're, and it's going to throw in the argument that was tasty. Now, what if a person puts in both flea and head? Well, flea is what it checks for first, and so if it finds flea, it's going to run that one. It's going to skip the other one. So if flea and head are both there, it will always run the command associated with flea. You type in anything else, it sends you right back to the beginning of the room. That's a little confusing. All right, now we define a function dead, and it takes a single argument, which is why, and that's the reason why. So it takes why, and so for instance, we have, well, that was tasty, or we have the bear gets pissed off, chews your leg off, we have the bear looks at you, then slaps your face off. And what it does is it prints and it sticks in that reason and then it says, good job, exclamation mark, because that's what the games used to say. And then it has the exit function. All right, after that, we define the function start. Now you would think that start was a built-in function, but we want it to mean something specific here. And so we have start and it takes no arguments, it just runs. It says you are in a dark room, there's a door to your right or your left, which one do you take? And it waits for you to type something in. And if you type left, so it says if next is equivalent or identical to the text left, then run bare room, which we defined right here. If on the other hand, L if, if the text that you enter is right, then it sends you to the, to the uh, Cthulhu room. Uh, if you enter anything other than left or right, it says you stumble around the room until you starve. All right. And then the last thing we have here is this is the only function it runs automatically. It We've defined the function start, now it calls the function start. And um, we defined it just in this block right above. So let's uh, come over here and run this. Now, you'll notice I'm already in my script folder because I changed the directory to that. I can do pwd for print working directory. There it all is. I'm gonna do command k to clear it out. Uh, actually, I'll just remind you, you can also just type the word clear. Clear, there we go. And I'm gonna run my script by writing in the word Python. And because I'm already in my scripts folder, this one, I can just type the name of the file, ex35.py. And there it is. It's gonna start with this text right here because we just ran start. It says, which one do I take? Now, uh, you see what happens if I go like this? None. I entered something other than left or right, so I'm dead and it goes back to the beginning. So. Fortunately, it's easy to run it over again. I just hit the up arrow, hit enter again. I'll say, I'll take the right. Oh, uh, there's Cthulhu. And then I'll put, I'm going to eat my head. And again, I can enter a lot because it's just looking for a keyword in there. And I'm dead. So let's go back up. 
Let's go to the other door left and there's the bear and so on. You see how that works. And it's actually surprisingly engaging for a small amount of text. It's just these branching things that send you back and recycle on each other and you can create an entire game. Again, Zed points out earlier, some of the earliest successful computer games were text-based adventure games. There's one called Zorg and there's another one called Adventure. Uh, its full name is Colossal Cave Adventure and you can still play them, download them or play them online. And um, anyhow, hopefully this works for you and I'll see you in the next exercise.